One significant event happened with Dr. Mills in New York at Carnegie Hall. I was a member of the Starscape Singers and we were singing in a concert at Carnegie Recital Hall. It was 1979. We had a wonderful concert and were excited to be in New York. The group had only come together three years earlier, so this was a big step. The following night, we all went to Carnegie Hall proper, which seated 2,800 people, and it was packed. We sat about six rows from the back to witness the famous Benjamin Britten War Requiem. There were three conductors, Rostropovich for the main orchestra, one for the percussion section, and one for the boys' choir in the loft. What an extravaganza that was. Peter Pierce sang tenor, and John Shirley Quirk, baritone. I was in awe of this massive and powerful production. Dr. Mills sat in front of the singers, and much to our surprise, he turned around to us and said, we are going to be on that stage, if not next year, the year after. Well, I was really taken aback as I could not imagine that as a possibility. And yet, there was so much conviction in his voice that suddenly it did seem possible. His vision was far ahead of ours. We drove back to Toronto, where he lived, and continued our rigorous practice routine, which was every night for three and a half hours except for Saturdays, which we have rehearsed from 9.30 to 1 or 2 o'clock. We often sang at music house on Sunday evening in Dr. Mill's large music room with many guests. One of the singers got a very large calendar, which was entitled Countdown to Carnegie, and we marked on it every evening what had been accomplished. Dr. Mills worked with our voices and opened them, as well as sculpting every note of every song. He even showed us how to enter the stage by seeing ourselves move before it happened. It was all based on preparation. We were taught to hear the note before it happened and he would emphasize that we were not producing the sound, we were receiving the sound. I used to practice individually in a closed closet, which seemed a bit ironic, as our instruction was to practice as if you were on the Carnegie Hall stage. Nonetheless, we were being taught the power of the imaging faculty through the vehicle of song. All this preparation paid off as we sang on the Carnegie Hall stage in 1981, just as he had predicted. When we first stood on that great stage, it was a bit daunting as it was well known as one of the greatest concert halls in the world. He had each singer go up to the top balcony to hear the rest of the group sing. We sang very softly, and you could hear it as clear as a bell. It was amazing. At the end of one of our original pieces, Dr. Mills commented on our noticed blown up perception of the hall. He said, why are you making such a big deal out of it? There were just four walls. Why don't you pretend that you're in my living room? After spending so much time singing in my little closet, imagining singing there at Carnegie, I later inwardly chuckled 
at the contrast. I learned so much through that experience. And we sang there six more times. It took discipline, tenacity, attention, focus, and the acquiescence of a vision far greater than my own. We experienced a heightened state of awareness that was held open for us by Dr. Nelson. I love seeing and love receiving the inner teachings of such a remarkable being as Dr. Mills. His work lives on in the many recordings and writings of his transcendent offerings. This is a short clip of a piece that we sang in Carnegie Hall and it's called Prophet Bird. Oh, great. 